Well, the Saudi regime always looks like it's teetering on the edge of extinction, and, but over the decades, it's actually proven to be uh, harder to dislodge than would appear from the outside. Uh, they have actually been fairly wily survivors who have managed to stay in power. Of course, unfortunately, one of the ways they've stayed in power since the takeover of the Grand Mosque in 1979 and the Iranian Revolution is by trying to be uh, more fundamentalist than the fundamentalists, or at least as fundamentalist as the fundamentalists, to make sure that there is not uh, jihadist or fundamentalist Islamic opposition to the House of Saud. The thing that really that struck me there was the level of gender apartheid, which is something that I was aware of at an intellectual level, but it's one thing to be aware of it in theory, and then another thing to see it in practice. When you go, for example, to the Riyadh Public Library and there's a women's library and a men's library, or when you go to the Starbucks and there's a family section, there's a men's section, or when you go to your hotel and there's no women there. Even the maids are all men. The real concern from the American standpoint is what is this country going to look like in the future and are they going to continue espousing these Wahhabi fundamentalist doctrines which basically create a new generation of suicide bombers. That's, that's a very worrisome uh, possibility if that in fact comes to pass and it's unclear to what extent the Saudi royal family is willing or able to undertake reforms to purge a lot of these violent doctrines from what they teach in their in their mosques and in their schools and and elsewhere and and in fact the kind of uh, ideology they spread abroad uh, through Saudi financing of of religious institutions uh, in the rest of the world I think there needs to be much more done by the by the Saudis to reform themselves and to purge the, the message of hate Well, I think the key words in, in, in the excerpts from the National Intelligence Estimate that have been released and, and that I read are uh, moderate confidence. That's the degree of, of confidence that the intelligence community has in the new judgments which they are releasing about uh, Iran, which suggests that their nuclear program is not as far along as, as many people have thought and, in fact, has been placed on significant hold since 2003. But they're saying that's, that's a judgment they reach with moderate confidence, which is a term of art in the intelligence community which says, we don't really know. Uh, we have some sources who say this, but we don't place that high degree of confidence in what they have to say. Uh, but even if there were a higher degree of confidence, you would have to be fairly skeptical of what the U.S. intelligence community knows about what's going on in a closed society like Iran. We can't simply assume that the Iranian threat is non-existent because of some moderate degree of confidence judgment reached by the intelligence community when in fact it's contradicted by other data points we have such as the International Atomic Energy Agency recently announcing that Iran has something like 3,000 centrifuges in operation and has the technical capability to produce enough highly enriched uranium within a fairly short period of time, a year or two, uh, to make an atomic weapon. Now, just because they have the capability doesn't mean that they're going to do it or they can do it, uh, but uh, I think we have to be uh, very cautious about concluding either that they have that they're about to get nuclear weapons or they're, they're not about to. I think we have to uh, we have to be uh, upfront about how little we know, and given how little we know, I think it's prudent to assume that that the situation may be worse than we realize, which doesn't necessarily mean that we have to act militarily, but I think we can't simply say, you know, it's no big deal, and, and, and because of this NIE, we don't have to worry about Iran. In fact, I think we still have to worry about Iran, and not just for their WMD program, but also for their state sponsorship of terrorism and all that they're doing to undermine governments in Afghanistan, Iraq, Lebanon, and elsewhere throughout the Middle Eastern region. Well, there's a lot of pretty amazing progress which has 
being made in Iraq, uh, you know, even more than I think a lot of us who supported the surge expected. I mean, the results have really been tremendous. Uh, you're seeing a reduction in violence levels down 50 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent, depending on which measures you use over the past six months or so. And it's snowballing. Uh, just as we saw violence building on itself last year, now we're seeing peace building upon itself. And every month we have fewer Iraqi deaths and fewer American deaths. And that's, that's pretty amazing progress, which I think is due to a variety of factors, in part because of the surge, uh, but not only because have, we have more troops, but also because we have, in general, uh, David Petraeus and General Ray Odierno, two particularly far-sighted commanders who are using troops in different ways in line with classical counterinsurgency doctrine to get control of the population and increase the level of population security. And this is encouraging some of the positive trends that have been building for about a year now, with many Sunnis flipping against al-Qaeda in Iraq and taking up arms to fight against terrorists a movement which we are now seeing spread into the Shiite community where they are, many Shiites are now starting to join these concerned citizens groups and take up arms to protect themselves and to limit the influence of the Jaish al-Mahdi, which is the most radical and violent Shiite militia. What remains is to really see if we can translate that into high-level political progress, into, or at least to hope that political divisions in, in Baghdad will not block the progress you're seeing at the local level. I think so far the signs are, are fairly auspicious. I think things are moving along fairly positively, but you have to remember this is Iraq, and just when you think you've made uh, two steps forward, you're liable to take one step back, and we have to be aware that this is still a war going on, and we still face some formidable adversaries who are uh, still willing to commit atrocities to achieve their aims, so things are not necessarily going to go smoothly, but they are certainly going much better now than they were a year ago, and far better than uh, most of the people who were writing off the surge six months ago could have possibly expected, or even those of us who were supporting the surge six months ago could have expected.